Hi, I'm Melissa. And I'm Candace. Welcome back to The Build Up for Episode 3, where we discuss the secrets of building wealth through real estate. Today, we're going to be discussing how women are leading men in home ownership. And we're going to be diving into this topic further with today's guest, powerhouse CEO, Bess Friedman. Today's episode is presented by Brown Harris Stevens, a luxury residential real estate firm located in the tri-state area in South Florida. Okay, well, it's Friday. We had a long week. I know, it's been a long week. It's very tough. But now we can, you know, just get ready for the weekend. What are your plans? Well, you know, I have to head upstate after this to Westchester where we have our weekend home. It's under construction. So every Friday we have a weekly project meeting just to make sure everything is on track there. I visited two weeks ago. Very beautiful. I mean, a lot of progress. How long more do you think you have for construction? So it's been already a year and a half, believe it or not. It took a long time to get the permits, to do get a town approval, and then do a lot of the foundational work. So mm-hmm. it was very slow moving for a long time, but now things are really progressing more quickly. So I think about another six months. Nice. Well, now is the fun part, right? You yeah. Can start seeing progress and... The design part is my favorite. Yeah, so it's been getting more and more exciting as we get closer. Yeah, I can't wait for it to be finished. Same. Um, (laughs) I have an excuse to go up there. Yeah. Well, speaking about home ownership, I read a recent article that said that single women are surpassing men in home ownership. Wow, that's really, really great to hear. Definitely. Um, I was actually very surprised by that stat. It said that single women own ten, approximately 10 million homes versus single men who owned around 8 million homes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're obviously still very close, but women are now edging ahead of men in home ownership. So I'm curious, though, what is the age demographic of these women? I assume they're on the older side just because at that point you've had more time in your career and you could be a little bit more financially stable versus younger women who are just entering the workforce. Definitely. That's a good point. But you also have to figure um, widows, right, unfortunately, and divorced women, they will have the property transferred over. So that helps with that stat. So those are calculated in the 10 million homes you quoted. Exactly. But what's really interesting is that um, I read a recent article that stated that women under 35 account for 54 percent of home ownership. Wow, that's really great to see young women really prioritizing home ownership and investing in real estate. So what do you think is the motivation for these women to purchase? Well, they have a lot of motivations, but I think a very big one is that uh, recently we're seeing young women climbing the corporate ladder. So they have more financial success. Um, As a matter of fact, in that same study, it said that uh, 48 percent of women are more likely to be in leadership positions. Wow. So it's interesting. So women are still behind men when it comes to being in a leadership role slightly, but they're now surpassing men when it comes to prioritizing home ownership. So that's a really interesting stat. I think that, like you said, there's a lot of motivations for people to want to buy. And what you said is a really good point. But also we have to think about high rents and Mm -hmm. how we are experiencing this affordability crisis across the country. I mean, here where we are in New York City, we just reached the highest median rent of $5,000 a month in Manhattan. That's insane. I couldn't believe when I read that. I mean, 5,000 is pretty steep. Very steep. Yeah, exactly. And what I think, though, is that a lot of um, people in general, but especially young women are getting very educated on this, right? They're seeing that why would they spend 5k on just rent when they can build up their equity? So they're looking to purchase more. Yeah. More real estate. So more real estate as as in what investment properties or? Exactly. So multifamily has been very popular across the board in all ages. But we're seeing young people, they are more interested in offices, surprisingly, as well as college towns. And under 35, they're looking at more vacation homes. Hmm. It's really interesting to see how the different age demographics are more interested in different types of investment strategies. But let's go back to women for a minute and specifically single women. You know, it's really great, like we've been saying, to see that they're prioritizing home ownership. As you said, you know, education is a big part of what mm-hmm. we do. So we love to see people becoming more educated and making these really important financial decisions. Um, and this has really helped to bridge that gender gap that we've previously seen when it comes to home ownership. Um, but that doesn't mean that the process of buying is any easier. Um, so what would you advise 
people who are thinking about buying and, you know, especially for women, how can we make that process a little bit more smooth? Of course, it's very overwhelming. Um, we see that every day as real estate agents. Yeah. But I think it's very important that you align the right team. I would say that you partner with a really knowledgeable lender, especially in this kind of interest rate environment that we're in, uh, you know, lower the interest rate, the lower your mortgage payments, mm -hmm. and of course your monthly payments. Also definitely have a knowledgeable real estate agent. Um, they would negotiate a really good deal for you. So that way, of course you need to buy at the right price, right? Mm -hmm. And it all comes down to your monthly payment, especially for cost conscious buyers. Right. And lastly, I would explore live plus income. Um, I think if you were to buy a multifamily, you stay in one floor, you rent out one or two floors, and it really offsets your mortgage expenses. So it's definitely something that I would explore. For sure. I think the live plus income is super interesting because like you said, you basically are living for free or almost for free. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great way to cover your cost of living while building equity, while, you know, really setting yourself up for future investments. And so and also, like you said, working with a real estate agent is something we're going to talk more about with our guest today of really how to find the right agent, especially if it's in a market that you're not as familiar with and what the impact that they can have if it's the right person on your investment portfolio. Definitely. I'm looking forward to that discussion. Same. All right. Well, we're really excited for today's guest. She is the first CEO of Brown Harris Stevens, a 150 year old real estate brokerage. And she's also been mentioned in the media and press over 800 times for her insights on the real estate market and industry. Welcome to the build up, Bess Friedman. Thank you, guys. It's so nice to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Of course. We're very excited. Um, Bess, you're the epitome of a power woman in the industry, and it's an inspiration for both Candace and I, and we're so privileged to be under your leadership. But despite being such a powerhouse, you had a different career before real estate. Can you walk us through that journey and yeah. what led you to real estate? Yes. First of all, thank you guys so much for the compliment. So nice of you. Um, yeah, I was a, an attorney before I got into real estate. I was an assistant state's attorney in Maryland, a prosecutor, and uh, and I worked at Legal Aid here in New York City in the Juvenile Rights Division. I always wanted to be a lawyer, so I practiced for about five years, but um, I start, we started to have a family. I got married and we started to have a family, and when my daughter was born, I was supposed to go back to work at Legal Aid, and I just did not want to go back to the regular nine to five sort of you know, I wanted to be able to spend time with my daughter. So I took some time off. I didn't go back. And I met a friend who encouraged me to get into real estate. She just thought I would be a perfect fit for it. So I started as an agent um, over like maybe 20 years ago now. And I loved it. I thought it was entrepreneurial. It was fun. I could work as much as I wanted. And I had time. I think that's why a lot of women get into real estate, because when we have children, we are usually the primary caretaker. And it allows us the option to take Take care of the kids and go to work you know you can do both there's flexibility versus like a regular corporate nine to five job and I loved it too I was like yeah. you can dress up you, you're on time you're just mm -hmm. a professional and I knew how to do all that so it was fantastic for me I actually relate to that because that's very similar to me um, I was a stay-at-home mom initially for about four years, and then I was a journalist before, but I didn't want to go back to corporate. I was like, yeah, the same like you, I wanted to have more flexibility. But as you know, too, once you get into real estate, it's really more of a full-time job, but you do have flexibility to move things around. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's a hustle. It's like you always have to be available, always have to return phone mm -hmm. calls. But you can do it. You can be at home. You can be with your family. And I think that's why a lot of women, single moms or even, you know, married couples, the women choose to get into real estate. That flexibility is fantastic. A hundred percent. But so you started out as an agent. Turns out like your friend was right. It was a great fit for you. It, uh, <laughs> Who knew? I, I didn't yeah. know that I would love it so much, but yeah. I really, really loved it. That's the best way to, you know, find your passion. That's right. um, so tell us how you went from an agent to now being the first CEO of Brown Harris <laughs> Stevens. That's a quite the, uh, the career a, path. <laughs> well, as my friend Rich always says, you cannot skip the steps, mm -hmm. which means it wasn't just a jump to that. As you know, I worked, you know, uh, 
for more than six years as an agent. I did really well, and I got tapped to get into management at Corcoran, which I did, and I really loved it. I was in a leadership role there at 660 Madison. Uh, learned a lot there, um, but then you know other companies uh, were interested, and Brown Hair Stevens Hall in particular, who I love, um, and and some ownership I got to meet at an event and. They wanted me to come on to support halls like a number two person. So I took a chance and I did and I came. I've been here more than 10 years now and I slowly sort of worked my way up. I was working with Hall, working with the execs, working the other territories, that kind of thing. And the role just evolved. And after 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, I've been now the CEO for five years and um, it just shows that fast, you. Huh? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like just it, yeah. if you, it's crazy, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't have that in mind. It wasn't like, oh, my God, I want this title. I was just doing a job and kept building and doing and that's kind of I'm scrappy I work hard and I think anybody who wants to do something it's that persistence and showing up and just doing the job not like looking for a title do the job that you need to do and then the rest falls into place usually should <laughs> it should doesn't it? right right um, to see such a strong woman leading in our industry is both fascinating and empowering for us but more so especially because this is such a male dominated industry what drives you as a leader? I think women have made incredible progress. Mm -hmm. I, we have to say that we have, we have moved, you know, made, accomplished so much. There's a lot more w women represented in companies and in government and so on. Um, you know, I think I was fortunate. I hit the lottery with my parents. I come from really, like my mom and dad always, you know, believed in me, showed me enormous love. I always felt like I could do anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that gave me the ammunition to do anything I wanted. And I think that's a big benefit. You know, you really, you, you benefit when you have parents who believe in you and help you. So I think that was one mm -hmm. of the big motivators. And also, as you know, when you have a son, right. I have two children. Um, and I think that they inspire you to be better people, mm -hmm. to show up for them, to be role models. I mean, I learned so much from them and I think it's sort of reciprocal, but you want to show up for them in a way and you're reminded all the time that when you're out there doing things that it matters, like how you show up, how you treat people and you want your kids to, to know that about you, that you are a good person, that you are decent, that you are civil. So I think it's all those things, right? Mm -hmm. It's sometimes people aren't watching what you're doing. But you know what you're doing. When right. you go to sleep at night, you're like, did I treat that person the right way? Right. You know, you don't want to, I want to, you want to feel good integrity. about it. all that. Exactly. That's what integrity is, mm -hmm. right? And it's like one, it's unified, one piece, right? Yeah. Speaking of being a role model, you know, you have a very important role here at the company. <laughs> and so what do you define as being a good leader? What makes you, what are the key attributes you think a good leader has? I think um, empowering other people to do what they do. And uh, it's a team effort. You know that, you know, a lot of the people that work here, Itzy mm -hmm. being one of them who we love and mm -hmm. Kevin and Hall, there's so many great people that work at this company and it's a team sport. And I think, you know, that term manager is like, I think of a manager as like managing things, but leaders inspire people mm -hmm. to want to do more, be better. And it's not holding them back. It's like, if you know, for example, Hall's better at so many things than me. And I'm like, you know, I, I learn from him and I'm better at some things than him. And so it's kind of, that's what it's about. It's not about like owning it and being in power. It's about empowering everyone. I think that's what leadership is, knowing that you don't know everything and knowing that you have to work with others. And what has been one of the biggest lessons you've learned as you've grown in your career, whether it's as a woman in real estate or specifically as a leader, what is like a really important lesson you had to learn? Uh, I think because I come from a law background, I didn't go to business school. So when I first got into the role as CEO, one of the owners sat down with me and was like, look, you've got to get really comfortable with the numbers. You need to know like the P&Ls. You need to like, uh, and, and I hadn't like really dug into that. So for me, that was a great lesson to understand what we're spending on, you know, what, what our income is, what matters, how the margins. And so that was like a huge, like a, a, an education for me in accounting. Yeah. And so I didn't know how to do that, but I learned. Alan Kersner, who's our COO, I don't know we if you know. ladies you know, know Alan. <laughs> Alan Kersner, yeah. yeah. Um, he, he's been like my right-hand person and he helps me with everything. So I kind of, I educated myself and there's still much more to go to learn. Speaking of educating yourself, do you have anyone that you look up to as a mentor? 
Yeah, I mean, I have I have so many people in my life that inspire me, that I love, you know, that have worked with me. Like I had a boss when I was a, a prosecutor, Danny Barnett, who is a mentor to me still. His his daughter was my intern over the summer. Mm. She's like she's twenty, and her her name is Katie, and. Her dad inspired me, taught me so much about courage, about standing up for the right thing. So he remains a mentor. In many ways, Hall is a mentor to me. Right. He taught me a lot of things, but he's also a very close personal friend and like family to me. Um, and then I'm just inspired, you know, um, by people out there in the in the public eye. I love, love, love um, Scott Galloway. Same. Yeah. I mean, I love him. He makes me laugh. Like his, like I laugh so much with him. He gives me so much joy. I love his irreverence because I'm very irreverent. My mom and I both love him. Bill Maher, I love him. Same. There's Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. There's certain things I love. Comedy, it's a big part of my life. And music, like mm -hmm. those are things that inspire me. Love Dave that. Chappelle is actually coming to New York. I got I invited to go yeah. to, I, I'm going to be away, but I got invited to go see him. I, I, there's nobody like he makes, he's so brilliant and so funny. And the beauty of that is that if you don't like his humor or it offends you, mm -hmm. you don't have to watch it. Exactly. It's like, if you don't want to see the Barbie movie and you don't like it, don't go see it. Right. Exactly. That's the beauty of, mm -hmm. you can make those decisions. So mm -hmm. yeah. we're in a very challenging exactly <laughs> yeah so very like everybody's fragile today so you exactly. have to be careful exactly yeah. <laughs> candace and i uh we were just discussing earlier that we read in the headlines and it turns out that women young women and single women are surpassing men in home ownership so we were very excited to learn that because as you know, for Candace and I, we do have a personal mission, and that is to really educate and empower people, but especially women, to use real estate as a wealth building tool. Um, so what has been your personal investment strategy um, for building wealth through real estate? Yeah, I love that factoid. That's so great. So I've always been a believer in real estate uh, and investing in it. And I have, we've always bought, except mm -hmm. for one time we rented, my, my ex and I, we rented our very first apartment, but then mm -hmm. we bought many after that. And I have invested in my own apartments mm -hmm. to rent out. So I just believe in real estate long term. I think it, if you can you know, stay the course, rent them out. Mm -hmm. um, you can do very well with them. And I think it makes a lot of sense. That's what I've always invested in has been real estate. Uh, so I really just, I don't only really work my book. I invest in my book because I care about it. I believe in it. A hundred percent. Do you regret not starting sooner when it comes to investing? Yes, I was. That was something I was sharing is that because I was in, you know, in college and then in law school, all the rent that I spent and it just was money out the window. At the end of that, I didn't have anything to show for it where mm -hmm. I could have put together some money and actually own something. So I tell my kids, they know I hammer it into their heads yeah. that the first thing they need to do when they have any sort of like little bit of money is buy a home. Even if it's a teeny little thing, own it, right. don't rent it. Especially, right, we just heard, well, we read that the median rent right now, it's five, over 5K. It's, it's the high, it's $5,400. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the highest it's been. Insane. And it's probably going to be higher after mm -hmm. August closes. And so think about that, mm -hmm. that the rental market is this crazy cycle. I mean, it's ebbs and flows, but therefore it's like money out the window. A lot of people are getting priced out of New York City. It's right. become too expensive. Exactly. Yeah, it's a huge problem. And, you know, it goes back to education, like we're talking about here is the education to know that not to just waste money on rent and to buy early. And we're also just discussing really the importance of having the right agent to navigate the process. And they can have a huge impact on one's investment portfolio. And so we wanted to get your insights or tips for how to, for someone who doesn't know a real estate agent, what would be a good way to go about finding someone who is knowledgeable and would be the right fit for them personality wise and all that? Yeah, I mean, the right agent, it's, it's like love, it's chemistry. You want to work with someone Somebody that you feel you trust that has your back that you can rely on um, so that's really important and so I would encourage anyone who's looking you know I bet a friend would could refer somebody right mm -hmm. you know a lot of friends there's that sphere of influence mm -hmm. um, and ask or at, you know ask somebody who's sold or who's rented who they like and you'll get the name of somebody or you can look on websites too but it's always a personal referral is the best because you know right mm -hmm. yeah you have a warm intro that's probably how you ladies get most of your business I would assume after these many years exactly. be, right it's mm -hmm. referrals people trust you they rely on you and they know when they work with you they're gonna get a great result 
Exactly. And I think, you know, in any sales position, you have to build that trust. And we have the track record. We have the trust. So definitely referral has been a huge part of our business. That's so right good. Now. That says a lot yes. about you guys. That's the way to grow your business. Exactly. Um, so what is your vision for the future of real estate? <laughs> <laughs> or, this, or this or, company? Yes. What a small question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, we've grown slowly. Now yeah. we're almost 3,000 agents. Mm -hmm. We're in four states. And I, we're always looking at other opportunities to acquire and expand mm -hmm. the company. We're the largest privately held company, which mm -hmm. I'm really, you know, proud of. I think it's nice to have that um, where we can make decisions. We don't have to worry about, you know, shareholders and that sort of thing. We still have to be careful. When it comes to the bottom line, you know, we look at costs, which is why during the pandemic, um, we had we were solvent, whereas a lot of companies had challenges. We were in a good place. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see us, you know, get I, I want I don't want to grow just for the sake of growth. But I do want us to, you know, add more agents, more territories. And I think that's something that we will do over time. Uh, a lot of companies have tried to buy us. Um, they still are. And yeah. that's always there. But I think for now, we're something special, particularly in New York City, mm -hmm. because we have such a, a big footprint and people know who we are and we manage so many buildings. Right. So we're a legacy company, as you mm -hmm. said, been around for 150 years. And I think there's something special about that. You know, we keep right. changing, evolving, growing. Um, there's something very familial about our company. It feels like, you know, people know each other, love each other, respect each other. And the culture, you know, really thrives on excellence. And I and I really love that about this place. I mean, I think that's one of the main reasons Candace and I joined. Right. The culture here is just phenomenal and the support and and leadership. Of I love that. I love it. I mean, you know, Hall, who was here way before me, is uh, like this pillar of strength and of always doing the right thing. He says, when you do the right thing, the right thing happens. Mm -hmm. um, and he's somebody who like exudes trust and ethics and is just, you know, he's top shelf. I always say he's like the Michael Jordan of real estate. Yeah, awesome. He knows everything about every, you know, building and he understands how it works. And he's also such a good person, mm -hmm. which isn't always the case. Nope. You can have somebody you work with that's great at their job, but you know, you might not, be, but he's also like has a heart of gold, which just makes him so much, you know, more appealing, I think. Yeah. Speaking about all the great things that we both, all three of us love about the company, what are some changes you'd like to see in the industry um, or in the in, for real estate or in brokerage? I mean, I would love to see things be more professional. I think there's such a bad sort of rap regarding real estate mm -hmm. agents. People really do perceive agents as like bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. They they do. I know. Right? Yeah. They're like, ah, yeah. oh, an agent, ah, oh, brokers. Mm -hmm. Oh, they want something. Right. You know, it's like lawyers and, and real estate agents. And bankers. And, yeah, bankers. <laughs> maybe a little bit above mm -hmm. but it's also like this sort of greedy mm -hmm. what can I get and I and I do think that um, not to harp on this again but I do think that the reality TV those shows have really perpetuated this negative perception of what you guys do. Mm -hmm. Like you're on the TV screen and it's like $500,000 is your commission. Like yeah. you just woke up and you just got half a million dollars for doing nothing. And they don't understand like it is seven days a week. It is a real hustle. You don't get paid unless you have results. And I think I would love to see more professionalism. I would love to see agents working better with each other, communicating. I mean, we have a, we're, we, we've improved, mm -hmm. but I think sometimes, you know, it can be challenging. There's a lot of agents that are on like a blacklist mm -hmm. and people are like, if they hear the name, they're like, nope, I don't want to work. And I think, you know, they do themselves a disservice. And I think it's, we can, we can raise the bar and do better. Yeah. We appreciate that. And <laughs> yeah, it's hard because yeah. when it comes to money mm -hmm. and the sky is the limit in real estate, um, you see people sometimes it reveals who people are and they behave their poorest because mm -hmm. their focus in the, is in the wrong place versus serving a client. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about how much money can I make? And I get it. You know, there's it, it's hard sometimes and you're trying to figure it out. But if you always focus on doing the right thing and putting your client first, usually all the other stuff will follow. A hundred percent. And there's so much to benefit from the right agent. And a lot of it is right now in this environment where there's a lot of uncertainty, interest rates are at the highest they've been. Um, so people are really looking for information and really trying to get guidance. And so you've been someone that's been featured a lot for your insights on the market. I'd and like to ask me a lot of questions. Yeah. I don't have the answers. Yeah. I can only give my, I, I always right. say yeah. this is my opinion because yeah. I don't know. But yes, like yesterday, 
I um, had an interview with Bloomberg and they were talking exactly about the rates because they're the highest they've been mm -hmm. in 20 years, over 7%. So I think that's creating a lot of tension in the market and we're seeing a bit of a slowdown. I'm sure you guys are seeing a little bit of that in your business, no? Of course. Yeah, but hard not to. The cost of home ownership has doubled in a, a little over a year. And so. most people in, in America get mortgages. You know, mm -hmm. we in New York City, there's a lot of discretionary spending. We know that in right. cash. But the rest of the country, most people, a lot of people have to get a mortgage. I have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. And that's real money when it, when it's double than what you would have paid. And it and it's and it's a lot of money if a seller's thinking of selling and they would have to their rate would be double if they bought something else. It's a shock to the system for sure, which has kind of put a lot of buyers on ice, sellers on ice. And so it's that's been exactly how I it's a good way to put it. Yeah. Both buyers and sellers are on ice. Plus, add to that that you have constrained inventory in a lot of the country, not New York City, but a lot of the country, and prices still have not come down to where right. they need to be. That, as I say, the trifecta of challenges has put a strain on our market, but it, that's not permanent. It's not a statue. You know, yeah. it moves, it changes. It's a living thing, and markets change. So there will be a better day. I just don't know when. Yeah. <laughs> where do you think we go from here, though, with the market? I mean, I think there's always, I always say the market is there to serve you, not instruct you, mm -hmm. right? So it's there to serve your client's interest. So mm -hmm. if you guys have a seller who's moving or mm -hmm. they just had a baby or they went through a divorce or somebody passed away, they have to sell right. or somebody has to buy. So their circumstances will dictate that, that and therefore they'll continue to move and do things and transact. And that's where your business is. People don't go, oh, the market is great. I think I'll buy. Mm -hmm. That's not usually how it is. It's just what it will do, like you said, is it will put some buyers on ice. Mm -hmm. Because I had friends recently who were going to buy and they were like, you know, we're just going to renew our lease. We don't know what's going on with rates. They, the Fed was saying, or economists were saying it was going to be a recession. Now there's not a recession. Inflation's down, but our rate, what's going to happen? So people are trying to figure it out. And there's been a lot of mixed messages out there. For sure. So I think we're in for a lumpy, bumpy, curvy road until probably the end of the year. I'm my guess. Okay. Could it get worse? Anything's possible. Okay. But we lived through COVID. <laughs> Ladies, mean, we lived through COVID. I, yes. And, and you know, New York was, you know, on lockdown. Mm -hmm. And we managed to get through that. So I feel like that, Lehman Brothers, 9-11, you name it. We, we are, you know, resilient survivors. And so we'll get through it. We completely agree. And for Candace and I, we always try to find the opportunities in these sort of uncertainty. That's right? the best way to look at it. There's op always opportunity mm -hmm. in crisis. There was in the pandemic even. Yeah. You know, other places like Connecticut, the Hamptons, mm -hmm. uh, Miami, all of that, like that, those markets thrive. But there's always opportunities somewhere. You just have to you have to work a little harder. Exactly. To find them, right? Exactly. Um, so based on your personal experience, can you give some insight and tips for people who are looking to get into real estate, specifically women? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I can't underscore enough how important it is, I think, to come into the office. Mm -hmm. I think office culture matters. I think like going to talk to whoever's, you know, your executive, if it, your manager, whoever's here, connecting with other agents, how was your open house? What's going on with your listing? Did that sell? Getting that real time information is valuable for you. So I think that's important and be at a company that you feel comfortable where you're going to learn, where you get good education. I also think that dressing the part matters. I mean, I know I'm dressed right now like I'm going to do a hip hop commercial, but <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> but but I you but you know, it, I'm saying like you want to be perceived as a professional. So when you're out there and you're showing an apartment, I would not encourage you to like, you know, be showing too much skin or doing too, you know, if you're out there working as a professional, you want to have people look at you as a professional. And I think women have a harder time because we can be over-sexualized. Mm -hmm. We are on social media. You can be sexy and classy and look great without, you know, putting your boobs out or without showing, you know, like you guys have seen Selling Sunset. Oh. And I can't, I mean, look, is it entertaining? I, I watched a few, like my daughter and I were like dying laughing. It's funny. And I'm sure there's a lot of like those women are good people, but you could not go into a room full of like men in a boardroom and go in there with like a see-through with your boobs showing and like a skirt that shows everything. Like nobody would be taken seriously like that. So right. I think that hurts mm -hmm. women in our industry um, because you can be sexy, you can wear makeup, you can do all those things, but do it professionally, right? There's a way to do a classic way so that you don't 
get perceived the wrong way. So I think tips are go into the office, talk to people, go to go see as much property as you can, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. I think that's also important. Be fluent with the inventory, know what's out there, understand your market. You know, you, you have to know more than what your buyers and sellers know. Otherwise, why are they gonna work with you? Exactly. Agreed. Right? Agreed. And in terms of women or just generally, uh, people looking to get into real estate on an investment perspective, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I mean, I really believe that real estate is the best investment mm -hmm. that there is. I mean, I, do I invest in some stocks and just leave them there? Like, yes, I've done that. But I, I do think real estate, first of all, it's for consumption. So mm -hmm. if you buy a home, you're actually living right. in it and you're there for a long term and it creates, as you said, one of you said, inter creating intergenerational mm -hmm. wealth. Right. That's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage anybody who's thinking about it, um, if they have a little bit of savings and they can sometimes get help from a lot of people go to family members mm -hmm. and get a little bit of help for the down payment, mm -hmm. work with a mortgage broker, figure that out. And just starting having something small is it, you'd be it's incredible how much that grows over time and what you can sell it for and then the next apartment. And I think you just have to start slow. You can't think, OK, I'm going to buy this huge penthouse. You have to start little. My first apartment was a one bedroom. Mm -hmm. So you start with something, you know, and you go from there. Right. All progress is incremental. I can't stress that enough mm -hmm. because everybody wants it now. It's like, I want to start my job and be at the top. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. With this generation, everyone wants instant gratification. and Yeah. It's like everybody wants it. It's like everybody. It's like Ozempic society. Yeah. I don't want to go mm -hmm. to the gym. I'm just going to take a pill and be skinny. It's like. Right. I get that there's some people that need to do that, but it's like re in reality, like going to the gym, eating healthy, doing it the right way mm -hmm. is sustainable. Like otherwise it's not going to be there for the long term. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Agreed. Um, we've asked you a lot of hard questions today, <laughs> yeah. or a lot of like broader thinking, but we'll leave you with one more, which is that, you know, you're a very thoughtful person and you didn't get here just by accident. So I'm sure you think about what kind of an impact you want to leave on this industry. And when you look back on your career one day, what's something that you hope that and as a lasting impression you have? I would think, and I think I, I do think I do this, um, that you could go to any company and I'll talk to any of the agents that I'm friendly with because I had lunch with a Corcoran agent recently who's a dear friend. And they would tell you that I, I, I treat everybody fairly with kindness, with love and with respect. And if I can help somebody, I've had people from other firms, um, not just, you know, people who are in like um, leadership positions, but agents reach out that I'm always there to help and listen and be kind and, and you know, treat everybody fairly. And I think that my legacy will be that, that I was somebody that people felt that um, I was kind to, that I, you know, took time for them and they took time for me. And I think that matters. You know, a lot of people are say to me, oh, you're too busy for this. No, I mean, we're here to help each other. And I think the real estate industry has given me such a great career and I love it. So I try to give back as much as I can. Well, I think it's more than that. You've done so much for women as well in leadership and in our industry, you know, seeing someone who has climbed the ladder, but maintained like a very humble and so uh, supportive, yeah, nurturing um, disposition is, I think, also part of your legacy because Melissa and I, you know, hope to have that same impact, you know. Well, you guys are having that. And, and by the way, I, I mean, I stand on the shoulders of, as we know, all the people before Diane, Barbara Corcoran, someone who I can't highlight enough, Marianne Teig, another person, CBRE CEO, incredible. Marianne Gil Martin, who yep. has her own, who's a friend of mine yep. who I had lunch with recently. She and she's like one of the smartest women in real estate that I've ever met. And she's hilarious, loving, funny, you know, and she worked really hard and got to where she is. And these are the people that have kind of plowed the path so that people like me can do what I'm doing. So I'm, I don't forget that. I realize that I'm here because they opened the door. You yeah. know, Barbara was a big opener of the door. Yeah, she, she slayed the industry yeah. and she continues to do that. And I love her. She's also been like a mentor to me as well. So. She is for any woman in real estate. For She's sure. so exactly. funny. She's like the Madonna of real estate. She yeah. keeps reinventing herself. You know, <laughs> we all yeah. need to do that. We all Take have a page to. from that book. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Um, no, but I think 
as a leader for, you know, yourself, um, Candace and I, we've been in other companies, right? And I think we mentioned before we joined um, the company because of the culture and, of course, the leadership. But it's been such a stark difference to really, you know, experience so nice. your type of leadership. And I think also, too, as part of your legacy, I, we love the fact that you're so innovative and you're constantly trying to um redefine the landscape of the current real estate, right? And I think that's super important as well. And we've been inspired because that's a part of our um, our approach, right? We do have a team here and we have uh, members of it that we lead yeah. to. So we really, really love the fact that you're so innovative. And I appreciate, to, you well, know. you guys are very, I mean, you guys also bring incredible, so many um, assets to the company because you guys are entrepreneurial, you do new developments, you, you're creating all these different things and you're right. constantly reinventing yourselves as well. And you guys work so hard together. You're a power duo. <laughs> and so we're, we are feel so fortunate to have you guys here. We, I love seeing you guys in the office and um, I just think it's such a big plus for Brown Harris Stevens. You guys represent us so well. well thank, thank you. you. Really do. Thank you. you. Do. Thank you so much. And I think that, you know, we've really covered so many important topics Thank today. So we really appreciate your time. No, thanks for having me down insights. here. I love yeah. the studio. By <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. The studio is great. Well, yeah. Thank you for having Thank me today, you. ladies. Thank you, Bess, for joining us today. It was fascinating to learn more about your journey in real estate and to hear your insight and tips and advice for people who are looking to get involved with real estate, but more so women. Couldn't agree more. We thank you again, Bez, and also want to thank our sponsor, Brown Harris Stevens. If you want to look us up, we're at tower.com and also on social media at tower. Until next week, 